One of the central teachings of our Catholic faith, one of the greatest gifts of our Catholic faith is the Holy Eucharist. The teaching that in the Eucharist, Jesus Christ is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and the reality that in the Eucharist and in Holy Communion, we receive him, body, blood, soul, and divinity. But how do we know that that's true? How do we know that that's real? How do we know that when we receive Holy Communion at the Mass, that we're receiving the living God? Jesus Christ himself present to us. We can study scripture, we can study history, but we can also study the dozen, dozen, dozens and dozens of Eucharistic miracles that have happened to verify and validate this truth that we believe and that we embrace as Catholics. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that we love this interview feedback. So if you've got questions about today's episode, or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org. I'm joined in studio once again this week by my, what did I say last week? Uh, regular regular alternate co-host. Yeah, I don't have my plaque yet. Oh, sorry, Robin nice Bruggeman. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Robin. Uh, just just between last week's episode and this week's we didn't have, enough, have time. enough time to <laughs> I also didn't change clothes, apparently. Uh, me either. Um, and you either. <laughs> maybe Awkward. because we just recorded that one. Um, maybe maybe next time you're on. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Robin, uh, folks didn't la- listen last week or previous episode. Uh, quick, and this time, unlike last week, I won't throw you a curveball yeah. as part of your... Um, I tried to share something different about me that I didn't listen. I'm a farm yeah, wife. That's a great way. The, I'm a farm wife. Who are you, Robin? You're a farm wife. I'm a farm wife and a mom to seven. I homeschool okay. a couple of... The, the bottom two of my seven. The so. bottom two. There are a f- couple of fun little tidbits about They're me. The bottoms. The yeah, bottoms. I'm not the bottoms. All right. All right. Bigs, middles, and littles. Um, and you're on from time to time because you're passionate about, as an adult convert, passionate yeah. about the faith, uh, no, growing in knowledge of, of uh, our faith yourself, mm-hmm. but then because of the impact it's had on your life, you want to tell other people about it. We talked about that right. a little bit last week. My yeah. analogy that I didn't share last week, we have time just for me to briefly mention it, is you know when you... Um, when you experience something that just is incredible, and it can be as incredible in, in an ordinary everyday sense or truly incredible, mm-hmm. we just, as human beings, most of us tell other people about it. Yeah. Like, there was, there's, when I see a movie that I really love, mm-hmm. I tell other people about it. Mm-hmm. When I go to a restaurant that I really enjoy, yeah. I tell other people about it. Uh, and, and that's basically what it means to be a, what it means to be a missionary disciple. Mm-hmm. We've had life-changing encounters with Jesus Christ, and we want other people right. tell other people yes. about Him. Amen. So it's just that it's 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 as it's simple that. as that. Yeah. It just comes down to that. We you know, there's nobody like now, Robin. You really should be talking yeah. about your faith no more than people. Or anything. No figure. What, no what? <laughs> no quotas or anything. no quotas. No quotas. There's no, no finger wagging going it's just on. We naturally want to share. You just naturally We're giving the, share. We want to give the gifts that we've been given. Right. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Amen. Share the love. Share literally the love. Yeah. So uh, this is really part two mm-hmm. of a two part. Well, it's not a two part episode. Could it's have, a two yeah. episode uh, series. series. There we go. Maybe we'll do a third. I mean, it's a mini series. <laughs> Did you know you're recording a mini series, Robin? I bet you always I, want to do it. Did you yeah. see God with. No, that's a movie. Uh, Winds of War. Or, mm. Okay, anyway. No, yeah, remember, I'm not good with <laughs> movies and stuff. <laughs> Uh, two part series on the Eucharistic and Eucharistic miracles. So yes, last that's week, what we're doing. last week, episode four, five, or five, four, six, five, four, six, we talked kind of about just the basics of what mm-hmm. this teaching means. We talked about, uh, uh, we unpacked a little bit the technical term transubstantiation, mm-hmm. which the church uses to explain a little bit more about this this beautiful doctrine and gift. And then we sort of just briefly introduced the reality of Eucharistic miracles. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to focus on in this episode. Yes, this is good stuff. 
Yep. It's so exciting. So we can't not share. Right. Exactly. We're so we can't to not share. share. Exactly. <laughs> so to sort of just like pick up where we left off last time, um, throughout history, over the course of well, centuries ago, we know uh, the mm-hmm. first millennium was the first documented Eucharistic miracle, but there have been dozens of them from then up to our own time. Mm-hmm. So there have been, over the course, o- over a thousand years, times when God has intervened, if you will, mm-hmm. to make not just the, the essence or the substance of the Eucharistic bread and wine into Jesus Christ. That's what normally at the mass, uh, the characteristics of the bread and wine remain the same, Mm -hmm. but their essence, their substance, what's quote unquote hidden, what Mm -hmm. makes the bread bread and makes the wine wine is chained into Jesus Christ. But the characteristics of bread and wine, that's why when we look at it, if we were to to do a scientific chemical analysis, it looked the same. same. But sometimes, to usually the bolster the faith of somebody who's starting to question or doubt mm-hmm. uh, the Eucharistic, the, the real presence of the Eucharist, God will uh, perform a miracle where the appearance, the characteristics, I should say the accidents, to use the technical term, of the bread and wine also change mm-hmm. into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, who is for alive and real. Present. for real. Like yeah. literally the characteristics of the bread and wine change yeah. to flesh, human flesh, human tissue, this and human blood. Incredible. Yeah, it is real stuff. It is like, re- real uh, stuff. And I mentioned so a website good. last week, um, therealpresence.org. Uh, you could just do an internet search for that at your favorite search engine, um, therealpresence.org. And there's all sorts of things on this website, but one of the big things uh, is the section on miracles. So there's a bunch of tabs at the top. If you click on miracles, you'll be taken to a page, sort of the home page for a Vatican International exhibition uh, of, of their, their incredible, um, well, posters, if you will, but they can be blown up into like really large uh, displays of dozens of Eucharistic miracles that have been scientifically, medically confirmed, verified, mm-hmm. and validated yeah. over the course of the church's history. Because a lot of them yeah. have happened more recently. Yeah. And a lot of them ha- not just happened, but th- they, they, the, the tissue remains and mm-hmm. can still be, can be scientifically tested yeah. and experimented upon to validate, to verify by uh, what seems to be the case. Mm-hmm. That is that the bread and wine have become not just in essence, but also in characteristics, the body blood, so mm-hmm. the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, as in like real human flesh. As in real human flesh. people are not picking up on this yet. To be very clear, <laughs> real human flesh. Real human flesh So I just want to just briefly read, Robin, from okay. uh, the website, just to give a sense of what's going on here. So are you going to start us with a miracle? Right uh, now yet. or not, not yet? Not yet, okay. just general introduction. Okay. So throughout, this website reads, throughout Christian history, our Lord has shown us that he is really present as the blessed sacrament. Interestingly, many Christian miracles have occurred during the times of, during times of weakened faith. For instance, many Christian miracles have taken place as a result of someone doubting the real presence. Including on this page, this webpage, are descriptions of just a few of these miracles. All of them have received full approval by the church. Most Eucharistic miracles, it goes on, involve incidents in which the host has turned into human flesh and blood. Of course, we as Catholics believe that the consecrated host is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord under the appearances of bread and wine. So we Mm -hmm. talked about that before, just alluded to it. Therefore, Jesus, through these miracles, merely manifests his presence in a more tangible way. So that's Mm -hmm. important to note. It's worth Mm -hmm. noting. Um, Jesus is truly present even if there's not a miracle. Right. Even if we don't see it, he's still there. Right. So it's a manifestation, Mm -hmm. a more tangible manifestation of what's true at every Mass. So the day that we're recording this, I happened to go to Mass this morning. And even though there was not a Eucharistic miracle, Jesus Christ was truly present in Mm -hmm. the Eucharist when the priest said the words of consecration. And I truly received him into my own body and soul Mm -hmm. when I went forward for Holy Communion, even though there was not a Eucharistic miracle. Uh, And then there's this quote from John chapter 20. Then he, Jesus, said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Mm -hmm. 
So even if you never have the opportunity to see in person Eucharistic miracle, uh, even if you never read anything about mm-hmm. what we're talking about from some of these miracles in history from this website or wherever, know that when you go to Mass, He's truly present. Do not, uh, do not be faithless but believing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet, yet believe. believe. Yep. Yeah, I uh, love that because we're it, in a similar way. The stories get passed on, you know, like with Thomas sticking his finger into Jesus' side, right, right? And we believe that because it's been passed on, and um, and so it's very similar. Like with the Eucharistic miracles, now we believe yep. this because it happened, and then we'll talk more about how it's been proven exactly. But that we can believe even though we've not seen it. Amen. Amen. So, um, Robin, do you, I know you've got some examples. I know we talked about the, there's one of the earliest and a notable example. Which mm-hmm. do you want to go with Why don't you first? go into the, the Luciano one? Luciano, okay. Yeah, let's do that. So, so that's a fairly common one, and then people can also reference that yep. pretty easily. Yep. So, again, at the website that I mentioned, therealpresence.org, uh, there's, they've got a whole list of a, a dozens of Eucharistic miracles that have happened. But one of the most well-known ones, uh, which they have um, two pages on. By the way, I should mention, um, here in our diocese in Sioux Falls, I know other places as well, there is a, a traveling exhibit. Mm-hmm. A Eucharistic miracles exhibit where just in our in our diocese there's been some laymen who a dozen years ago maybe more at this point um, basically decided to take what's available online the, these these pages which are beautifully done they're in color and photographs and so on and they made large posters out of them mm-hmm. and then put them on display boards and they'll go around. Um, on, on their own dime, I mean, they, mm-hmm. they receive free will donations to cover costs if, if given, but they'll drive it's with like a trailer. It's a tour, kind of. It's a tour, exactly. Yeah. And, and parishes will set these up. So yeah. um, you may have seen some of these, mm-hmm. uh, and I know again, other, other places have this as well. You may have seen mm-hmm. these before, but one of the most well-known miracles, which is in this exhibit, um, oftentimes talked about, occurred in Lanciano. We, we, we as Americans, we, we want to say Lanciano or Lanciano, <laughs> yeah. but it's yep. a Lanciano, Italy, in 750 AD. Wow. So This was quite some time ago. Let me do some quick math there. 1,273 years ago. That's a long time uh, ago. That's a long time yeah. that this particular uh, miracle happened. So um, just because I have it in front of me, I'm just going to read a yeah, little bit from it. this this website, uh, the Eucharistic Miracles ex- ex- Exhibition about the miracle, uh, Eucharistic Miracle of Lanciano from 750 AD. Uh, an inscription of marble from the 17th century describes this Eucharistic miracle, which occurred at Lanciano in 750 at the Church of St. Francis. A monastic priest doubted whether the body of our Lord was truly present in the consecrated host. He celebrated Mass, and when he said the words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood, he saw the host turn into flesh and the wine turn into blood. Everything was visible to those in attendance. So this wasn't sort of a private miracle where the, and then they rarely, they're, they're always quote unquote public. It's not just yeah. a vision that yeah. the priest has. This is literally, it, really it happens. actually happens mm-hmm. where as, as, as again, this, this inscription in marble, um, confirms every, everything was visible to those in attendance. The flesh is still, so this was in the 17th century, a thousand years mm-hmm. after the fact, this marble inscription. At that point, this the flesh is still intact, and it's still intact today. Today, you can go today. visit it. Yep, the flesh is still intact, and the blood is divided into. So this is the, the inscriptions over now. Um, this is just the the information from the website. The flesh is still intact, and the blood is divided. It, this this is just right here. The blood is divided into five unequal parts. Okay, so so there was both tissue, uh, human fl- tish- human flesh tissue as part of the miracle, and blood, and so the blood was sort of um, kept in I think different vial, I think in little vials. Containers of some sort. It's, it's divided into five unequal parts. So they have different amounts of blood. They capture different amounts of blood um, in these five different vials or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's divided in five unequal parts, which together have the same weight. As each one does separately. What? I didn't actually know that part. So, here's an example. 
let's just, I have five kids from almost 19 down to almost 10. If I took my five kids, and if this miracle were the case, what that would mean is if you weighed each of my kids, they'd all be the same weight. When you look at them, they're, they're not the same size. Yeah. But if you, if you weigh them, they'd be the same weight. And then if you put them all on the same scale, it'd it be the, the same, same weight. Again. So let's just say the number's uh, 100 pounds. If you put Mercy, the 10-year-old, or Elena, the, the almost 19-year-old, anybody in between on the scale, they'd all be 100, even though they're definitely different sizes. And if you all put them all on the scale, They'd be 100, 100 pounds. And, and this, again, has been scientifically very... This isn't just some myth that somebody... Oh, yeah. No. Pe- scientists have taken the, the, these five different uh, vials or whatever. The yeah. They've weighed the amount. And somewhere later in here, um, it has, it, it has the, how many grams it is. They've weighed them. Even though they're different amounts of blood, they're the same. That is crazy. The same mass. So it doesn't. And if make you sense. weigh them together, it's the same mass. That by itself That's is, a, again, miraculous. this That's is crazy. from 750, and today, and we're now in 2023, and this yeah. this miracle has endured for over 1,700 years. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. I think. Whatever. 1,200. 1,200. 1200 yeah. 1,200. But we're just yeah. Why do we keep looking at you for math questions, Elise? It's the glasses. <laughs> People never get to see Elise. She, she She's hiding in the studious. corner producing back there. So, Robin, like that by I, itself. Yeah, I didn't actually realize that about the blood. I read that, but I think it was not registering yeah. with me yeah. what was taking place. That's incredible. That's incredible. Okay, so, I mean, this in addition to the fact that the host turned into human flesh. Yes. And what kind Crazy. of flesh? Do you know? I'm pretty sure. Heart. 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 Heart flesh. So the, 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 can I go on? Keep going. Yes, okay. yes. In, 19, <laughs> in 1970, the Archbishop of Lanciano and the Provincial Superior of the Convention Franciscans at Abruzzo, with Rome's approval, requested Dr. Edward Leone, I'm sure it's Eduardo Leon, uh, Linoli, director of the hospital, and you have to go like this yep. in the Italian. It's the full uh, thing. You have to gesture for mm-hmm. those of you who are listening on radio. Director of the hospital in Arezzo and professor of anatomy, histo- histology, chemistry, and clinical microscopy. So 1970, so just not that long ago. Yeah, so yeah, 50 that's years, when- modern scientific era right so he was commissioned by local church authorities and again he's a professor of anatomy histology chemistry and clinical microscopy Mm -hmm. to perform a thorough scientific examination on the relics of the miracle which had occurred 12 centuries earlier Mm -hmm. on march 4th 1971 the professor presented 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 a detailed report of the various studies carried out here are the basic results so five points one the miraculous miraculous flesh is authentic flesh consisting of muscular striated tissue of the myocardium which is the heart Mm -hmm. portion of the heart the miraculous blood is truly blood the chromatographic analysis indicated the indicated this with absolute and indisputable certainty so it's really human Mm -hmm. blood it's not ketchup it's not (laughs) tabasco sauce tabasco (laughs) sauce it's not uh water with a little red dye number five real human it's real human blood the immunological study shows with certainty that flesh and blood are human and that the and the immunohematological test blood allows us to affirm with complete and objective certitude that both belong to the same blood type ab The same blood type as that of the man of the Shroud of Turin. So that mm-hmm. that that that's a the, whole nother topic. A whole nother but, topic. But when they've done analysis type. of that, the that the, the blood type He's of the AB. the man whose shroud that was is A B. And awesome. the type most awesome. characteristic of Middle Eastern populations. So wild. This is, that's three. Four. The proteins contained in the blood have the normal distribution in the identical percentage as that of the serious pro- proteic chart for normal fre- flesh, fresh blood. So, so whatever, like, as blood mm-hmm. dries, mm-hmm. time gets mm-hmm. old over time, it takes on different scientific uh, aspects. Mm-hmm. The proteins contained in the blood have this normal distribution as normal. Yes. Fr- fr- 
I want to say flesh fresh because we're going to flood. Normal fresh blood. And this was in blood. 1970s. 70s. And the actual blood was from 750. 750. So this is so many years that it would not have remained Fresh, fresh, no matter really how you would have stored it. Exactly. If you were to have stored it somewhere. Exactly, exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, that is completely miraculous. Okay, so five. Number five. No histological dissection has revealed any trace of salt infiltrations or preserved yeah. substances used in antiquity oh for the purpose of embalming. Professor Linoli so also cool. discarded the hypothesis of a hoax carried out in past centuries. This report is just published in here. It aroused great interest in the scientific world. Also in 1973, the chief advisory board of the World Health Organization appointed a scientific... Conv- so can you imagine back in the day when the yeah. World Health Organization investigated Catholic miracles? I know, right? How about that? Anyway, <laughs> um, they appointed a scientific conv- commission to corroborate Linoli's findings. Mm -hmm. Their work lasted 15 months, included 500 tests. Mm -hmm. It was verified that the fragments taken from Lanciano could, could in no way be likened to embalmed tissue. As to the nature of the fragment of flesh, the commission declared it to be living tissue because it responded rapidly to all the clinical reactions distinctive of living beings. So, like, when you do, like, a test on my skin or some other, like, it's going to react differently than if you cut off a piece of my skin and let it sit for 12 centuries and then do... Their reply fully corroborated Professor Lonoli's conclusions and the extract summarized the scientific work, blah, 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 declared that science, aware of its limits, has come to a halt face to face with the impossibility of giving an explanation. Okay, and there's even more to go on, but Mm -hmm. we're... And this is just (laughs) one one of several miracles. Dozens of miracles. Yes. So amazing. So if you just hear of the miracle itself taking place where... The host, when it is becoming Jesus' body and blood, actually truly does become flesh. Yes. Heart flesh. Heart flesh. A B blood. Fresh flesh and blood. Flesh (laughs) fresh flesh. Which I mean, don't get grossed out, people. This is you know it's it's weird, but it's miraculous. Right. It is miraculous that and for God to want to show us and make that connection of what we believe is taking place. Um you know, during um, the transubstantiation yep. in, in communion, um, it's just incredible. It is incredible. I mean, can you imagine witnessing that? Right. The people that were there seeing that take right. place, right. and and you can um, study other miracles where you can see, you know, the blood dripping down from a priest yes. while it's happening. Yes. Um, but so when this happened all those years ago, of course, the people there are thinking, "Oh my gosh!" And so they're preserving it because I mean. <clears throat> what you would do i'm not preserve it but they're putting it in a special place are you able to pull up like put up the what they store it in um the what'd you call it like it's in like a monster it's like sort of a thing. monster yes yeah, so, um, so maybe we a... can put that on for if for those of you who are watching on youtube or um on chris's podcast viewing spot um but then what's amazing is so you know we talked about how that was 750 but then in the 70s, they decide to, you know. Right, because, 1970s. And the reason is because if you're listening, anybody's thinking, you know, really? Like, because it's just so, it's so hard to believe and wrap your head around. Right. But so what the church does to be sure that, you know, we can believe and not just have like this story that is passed down, they put the effort into scientifically um studying it, investigating it. And yep. I love that the church does that so we can be sure that it is what it is. Yep, yep. And this is still on display today. Today, in Lanciano, And there's Italy, just no St. explanation yep. of it. And yep. so Elise has pulled up some, um, she's pulling up some different images of Eucharistic miracles. So like, I don't think this is the one. They're not right? all Lanciano though, are they? Right? Yeah, These this one's a different Eucharist. one. Yeah. Yeah, so yep, if you can yep. pull up the Lanciano one, it shows it's like in a monstrance. Like I'm also when I see the pictures of it, I think, can you imagine going to adoration? Oh right, right. It's yeah. awesome enough when it's the monstrance of Jesus, but if you actually had the flesh, his, his flesh there to see, that miraculously, right, up showed right during these miracles. Right. Yep. It's just mind blowing, yep. and it's awesome. It is truly awesome that these miracles take place. And, you know, you brought up how sometimes it happens to priests or maybe it's a brother or whoever who is um, 
celebrating the mass. Well, the, a, and it, a brother wouldn't celebrate the mass. A priest or would. a priest. Brother. Well, can they be a brother priest? Or like a monk. Uh, oh, yeah. A monk. Uh, yeah, a monk. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. A monk. Yeah. That's what I meant. A monk. Um, and how sometimes it's them that is doubting yep. what's going on. But there still, we go. so here yeah. at least pulled this up. So if you if you um, watch on YouTube, you can see there's like the monstrance in the top, and if you look, there's actually like the hole. So I did some kind of studying on it, and there's like a hole in the center, and that's yep. where the host part of um, the Eucharist, you know, in the form yep. of the host, was there, and that was around the actual round host become Jesus. Yep. And then down below is that there's like a little um, container. At the bottom where those angels are holding it up, is that where the blood, the I blood is? So. I believe so. Which is just, it's incredible. And I love how our church goes to um, the extra step to to make these things available to help the faithful grow in their faith. Yep. Like you can actually go here, visit this, and see this with your own eyes. Or like the exhibit that you've talked about traveling, they have pictures of it. But I just love how our church doesn't keep it locked behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. It is for us to see because mm-hmm. that miracle, so many miracles, all miracles that take place weren't just made for the person that it happened to. Right. It's made for so many more. And now look at us yep. here talking about this and just being amazed at the miracle that t- took place here, has taken place, and can continue. Like we don't know, but it could it'll ha- potentially yeah. happen again. Long, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I just love that. It. I love that God has... Um, made these things happen in his power to just remind us of the true miracle that yep that yeah. it is and and what what it is we believe what we believe is real right the real body and blood soul and divinity real true um yeah it's it's amazing exactly yeah the words Cap- can't describe the catholic faith is not just an idea or a theory mm-hmm. it's a description of reality yeah so in the mass the reality is jesus christ becomes present mm-hmm. so these miracles are there to confirm the reality that we believe in so just real quick yeah. robin before i give you any last thoughts so the, the eucharistic uh Miracles exhibition has three miracles from the 2000s. So they're not, again, mm-hmm. they're from throughout the centuries. Yep. From, one from India in 2001, one from Mexico in 2006, and one from Poland in 2008. Uh, and there are others that have happened since then that just this exhibit was done many years ago, mm-hmm. so they just haven't sort of made the cut. But this mm-hmm. is all here to strengthen our faith, right, Robin? Yeah. Amen. So, um, Folks, again, the website is therealpresence.org. Go check it out. You can spend hours reading. Mm -hmm. If one of these Eucharistic Miracles exhibits is ever in your parish, go and, as Jesus said to St. Thomas, do not be unbelieving, but believe. Amen? Amen. Amen. And folks, that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email us, ignition at sfcatholic.org, with any questions about today's episode or ideas for future ones. Until next time, may God bless you.